I want to share with you the accomplishments, the mistakes, and the big lessons from 2022 so that you can learn from my experience. And let me tell you, there have been hella mistakes. Welcome to the Aligned and Magnetic podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Ashley. I'm an ICF certified business alignment coach, and they call me the money mindset and manifestation queen. I'm here to help you make your vision for your life and business a reality and doing it in a way that lights you the fuck up. If you're ready to build an aligned, magnetic, and profitable business so that you can live the life of your dreams, you are definitely in the right place. In this podcast, I promise to provide you with the raw lessons, the tools, and powerful questions to help you on the way to creating success your way. Thank you so much for being here. Now let's dive in. Hi, hi, love, and welcome back to another episode of the Aligned and Magnetic podcast. So like I said, today I'll be sharing my accomplishments, mistakes, and lessons from 2022. I really want to just give you a recap of what went down in 2022 so that you can kind of get an inside perspective on what my business looks like and how I run my business and um, obviously learn from the mistakes that I made because I definitely have some lessons to share with you today. So to begin, my intention for 2022 was really to set foundations in my business. I remember reading my numerology report and it was literally, and I also remember actually receiving a lot of intuitive guidance around foundation, 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 foundation. It was something that just kept coming up for me, like foundations, foundations, foundations. So to me, what having foundations really means is having a business that can run smoothly and efficiently. I kind of took a hiatus on in 2021 after my divorce. I kind of went down this like healing journey and self-discovery journey, which was so beautiful and so necessary. Um, and I really took a step back from my business in order to do this, right? And I wasn't necessarily set up in my business to be able to do that. And I definitely needed to go through this process in order to make the changes that I did make and get to the place where I am but essentially the biggest thing that I realized is like okay I want kids soon you know what I mean like I'm almost 30 um, I want to travel more and I don't want my business to be reliant on me showing up all of the time in order to sell I would like to have systems in place that can sell for me so that I don't have to be on my phone all day every day so I can raise a family And be very present, you know what I mean? As much as I love work and I love being in my office, I also love people. I love doing things that excite me. I like being creative and I don't want to be tied to my office all of the time. So up until this point, up until 2022, I had some foundations in my business. Um, But if I'm being completely honest, I feel like I kind of burned them all down in 2021. So I used to email my my list um, relatively frequently. I used to do a Facebook Live at least once a week. It was called Learn with Lauren. All of these things that worked um, like relatively well. I mean, I made money, right? So like something was working. And I would do live series to launch my programs. Those also worked really well for me. Um, but like I said, in the beginning of 2021, I just had to stop. Like I could not, my body would not allow me to move forward. I would sit in my office and I would get a headache. I would feel nauseous when I was on calls with clients, you know? So, um, and when I was doing Facebook lives, I was like blank, like there was nothing. So I feel like I definitely had to go with it. I definitely had to, Um, just follow whatever the fuck was happening and see, you know, surrender to the process and see where it took me from there. Luckily, we were fine financially and we were able to, I was really able to just give myself that time and space um, and I feel very lucky. And also, I I also have the belief that the universe is always supporting me. So um, that was definitely a helpful belief to have as I took a step back from my business. But Really, for 2022, let's get back on track, shall we? (laughs) I really needed to figure out what the fuck I did for people. 
As a manifesting generator, I am good at a lot of things. I'm tech savvy. I build websites. I can make marketing content. I can tell you how to write aligned messaging that actually sells. I can teach you how to sell. I can coach you. I can mentor you around coaching. I can teach you coaching skills. Like I know a lot of things. I know systems. I know how to create automations and funnels and all of this stuff. A lot of skills, right? Very business oriented. I know a lot of things. And so my, and also manifestation, right? The thing that I was primarily focused on, I feel like at the time was manifestation and intuition and trusting in yourself. So I was kind of lost in this space of like trying different things and really avoiding the whole business coaching industry because I fucking, oh, I don't like it. To be honest, like the business coaching industry rubs me the wrong way. Um, I just don't even want to be grouped in with business coaches, but I obviously had to realize that like I am here to help shift the industry rather than run away from it. And so ultimately, um, I'm going to get into this. Why am I saying all of this right now? Anyway, ultimately I ended up figuring out like what the fuck Lauren, you're a fucking business coach. Stop hiding. And that's what we stepped into. So like I said, I had built some foundations and some systems in my business and they were usually, not usually, they were systems that I had built back during my health coaching days. And those systems ended up working over time. It takes time to see your systems work. I want you to know that. But um, I ultimately realized that what I was writing about and what I was sharing was just not in alignment with who I am. It's not what I wanted to do. So we shifted into mindset and manifestation put some new systems in place, was showing up live. And then I ended up getting divorced back in 2021. And I just let go of a lot of things that were working well in my business because I needed the time and space to heal myself first before I could show up. And like I said, I believe this time was very um, necessary. It was kind of like an incubator for me, a place where I could really just reflect on everything, a place where I could go internal and be creative and express myself and I'm truly grateful for the time off that I took in my business. I definitely still tried to put things out there. I tried to sell things and it just didn't really work um, because I wasn't fully committed. I wasn't like 100% in. You know, we were traveling a lot and I was enjoying life and um, again, no regrets whatsoever, but yeah, definitely It was a hard time for me, Um, a hard time in terms of like like who my identity was as an entrepreneur, I would say that. In terms of my relationship and everything else, like I felt so open and so blessed. Um, But yeah, when it, and my travel life, like all of that was so amazing. But my identity as an entrepreneur was definitely like, what the fuck? So... One of the lessons that I learned from 2021, just to throw this in there, because apparently I have that in my notes, is um, if you make everything about your business personal, it's going to be very difficult for you to show up when your personal life goes to shit. Now, I don't think I made everything about my life personal, but what I do know is that when I was showing up on my Facebook lives and everything, I was kind of just sharing life examples. Um, I was definitely sharing and teaching about business, manifestation and all of these things, but I would very much lean on support um, on my daily life and like what was going on, you know what I mean? And I didn't have like any systems to support me when shit fell apart. So now what I have is I have like an entire library in my back end of my business to support me with content, with things to teach on, with like, oh yeah, Lauren, look at all of the things that you can teach the world, you know, so that at any given moment, if I'm having a bad day, if I'm not feeling like showing up, if I don't know what the fuck I'm teaching on, I can go to this, um, bank this library of content 
and I can respond. So this is actually something that's very helpful as a manifesting generator because I have something to respond to. I'm not just leaning on life experiences to respond to. Do you know what I mean? So having this bank of content has been super helpful and definitely helpful in setting the foundation. And this is something that I actually actually just implemented in 2022 as well. So 2022 was my year of foundation. Um, I had set the intention of launching my podcast, which hello, you are listening to the podcast of 2022. Um, and we did that. So that was amazing. So I'm going to go through and kind of just recap Uh, And I've also set some other foundations, but I'm going to recap that at the end. So I feel like this episode is going to be a bit messy, but welcome to my fucking world. Um, And I'm going to start off with Q1. So Q1, January, February, March. We went to Vegas like twice, I think. Um, We started the year in Vegas, got COVID, and I had been making some money in my business. I had some coaching clients and I had some work teaching coaching coach training as well which I collaborate with my mom on Um, and up until that point I had kind of reached a plateau in my business and I really had this craving to be in person with people as an online business owner especially going through COVID I felt so estranged from people I felt like the people that I did relate to in my world no longer fit my world. Things like were just really weird. My relationships outside of my love life were changing and I kind of just craved being around more like-minded people. I felt super allergic to my computer. Like I said, it was like showing up in my body. I would work for like 15 minutes, get super dizzy. I spent a lot of time on the couch. Shit was off the wall fucking weird, I'm telling you. Um... And I legit just, I str- it was such a struggle to work. So of course, um, I'm all about multiple streams of income, especially when you're starting a business and luckily uh, getting into events and also teaching coach training um, was super helpful at that time and also had a couple one-on-one clients. So I wasn't focused on like launching anything. I don't think I had launched. Oh, I think I tried to launch a line and manifest the year in December before that, but it was not a success, which that's okay. So something that I picked up in Q1 again were my team meetings. And this is super, super important. Even if you don't have a team, this is one lesson that I want you to take away from this episode today is that if you do not have some sort of meeting with yourself some sort of ritual to sit with your business every week you can probably expect your business to look like a fucking hot mess so every week I now since 2022 have been meeting with my team again and we just set intentions like what are we grateful for and I have to be honest like we've kind of gotten off track of that but mostly like what what are the intentions what are we promoting what are we working on this week and what are the intentions what are my expectations as a business owner Um, I had to really remember that like I'm the leader here I'm the one that pays the bills and I'm the one that is leading this business forward I need to step into my leadership it is not the responsibility of my team to carry my role as a leader so if you like i said if you do not have a team how can you carve out some time every week to commit to yourself to be in your business and to set intentions um even if the intention is just to reflect or make one little move forward like i don't care what it is but if you want to see progress on your big vision if you want to take steps toward Um, creating that big vision for yourself, making more money in your business, you need to have some sort of weekly commitment to yourself and to your business. So that was pretty much January. In February, we traveled to Seattle. I made $7,486 cash. That was from the event I worked. That was from one-on-one coaching and also from teaching coaching skills. Um, My dad also came to, and that was one of my actually higher cash months in 2022 getting confused now because we're in 2022 2023 we also had my dad come to visit in february and then in march 
we were back in Vegas again. So then in March, I decided to start being a little bit more consistent and intentional with reels, with TikTok, with posting. And up until that point, I had been kind of just frustrated with the whole algorithm thing, with getting out there. And I felt like, I guess, kind of restricted and like, I don't know what the fuck people want to hear from me. You know what I mean? Um, And so I, I stopped and I took that time to reflect, which was definitely key. And come March, I was kind of thinking like, okay, let's put that aside. Like, how do we open up our mind? How do we think about this in a better way? Because we know being consistent online is definitely key to building better relationships. We also traveled that month to Merida for Alexis's 30th birthday, which was a lot of fun. I bought my iMac, which I am using all the time, every day, and I'm obsessed with, and I love it, and um, I think I really needed that to start my podcast. My 2015 MacBook Air was not doing it for me anymore. She's still obviously super useful when I travel, but definitely glad I made that investment in my iMac. Um, I also shared some interesting business updates. So I closed down the Feminine Alignment and Manifestation Shop where I had all of my courses and my bundles available. Um, These courses and bundles didn't sell because I never ever spoke to them. I never sold them. (laughs) Um, I also announced that my connection slash discovery calls would become paid calls, which after doing this didn't feel right to me. I think the reason that I made that decision was because I was feeling bitter um, and I felt kind of like, mm, well, it was kind of coming from a scarcity mentality of like I give so much on these calls and then I don't get anything in return, right? Which is obviously a limiting belief and that was just something that I needed to look at within myself rather than kind of like put this on my business if that makes sense like it was something that I needed to shift internally because previously what I believed and still believe is that um there's more than enough for everybody and that when you demonstrate your skills people naturally will want to invest with you um if it's the right time for them and just because you're giving in one area does not mean that you are necessarily going to receive in one area but because I had been going through the shit, like literally the muck, um, I, yeah, like I said, just felt a lot of bitterness. I felt like I'm ready to like get clients again. What the fuck's going on? And so it was kind of like a temper tantrum kind of thing. So the other thing around this too is that I feel like this is being like part of being a manifesting generator is testing things out and seeing how they feel and then adjusting as necessary. So something, I mean, I tested um, putting out there that my connection calls or discovery calls would become paid calls. But anyway, the point of all of this is that um, I was experimenting. I also have the line six in my profile, which acts as a line three in human design, which is all about experimentation until around the age of 30, which will be next year. So I'm still in the process of experimenting. The reason I'm talking about this so much is because I felt so much shame and guilt around putting this out there that like, oh, my connection calls are going to become paid calls. And then after that feeling like, that's stupid. Like, why would I do that? You know, Um, and then feeling guilty about it all. So anyway, I've had to do like a like a little bit of like releasing around that which has obviously helped. I also announced the podcast coming and started to introduce a little bit more Reiki into my services. Oh my God, and I also did a rebrand. That was a lot of fun. In March, I purchased a Thrive Cart, which was my new, it's going to be my new funnel and checkout system. And it's gonna change the game for everything that I do. And um, after purchasing it, I did a little bit with it, but not much. And of course, it doesn't matter what system you purchase. Um, I mean, of course, some systems are better than others, but you got to work the system, right? The system's not going to work on its own. So you actually have to do something with it and you have to make it work. It doesn't matter how you invest your money. But if you are not doing the work that you need to do, the system is not going to do its job either. So that was the main lesson from that. Um, And then I actually did end up doing something with Thrivecart in the end, and I am implementing it slowly. 
But um, yeah, I just wanted you to get that little piece of lesson from me because eh, aren't we all guilty of purchasing a new system think it, thinking it's going to fix our dreams? So are all of our problems. So Q4, or no, not Q4, Q2. I launched a new funnel which was the Own Your Intuition mini workshop and the full workshop. So this was a project that I had been working on where I took a bunch of mini trainings and put them together um, in a $1 workshop. And the purpose of this is to give my audience a taste of what it's like to work with me, get some quick wins, and, you know, to kind of like feel it out. Like, would we be a good fit to work with each other? I don't know. There is psychology behind this where um, typically if someone will purchase a one dollar thing from you, they're likely to also purchase something bigger from you in the end. That's not 100% true of all cases, but it's just, you know, a new sales technique that I was trying out. And we did get a few sales from it, which is awesome. Um, I sold a couple of the workbooks and meditation and then I sold a few of the full workshops and we got a couple people into the $1 workshop, which was awesome. The lesson from this though, because we could have ramped it up, we could have gone a little bit bigger, is first of all to communicate more clearly what people are going to get from what you're selling or offering. I feel like at that time my language was still very airy-fairy, still very intuitive and fluffy and ethereal you know what I mean but people live in real worlds and um, when they're trying to decide if they should buy something it is typically uh, both emotional and logical but we need to like actually speak to what it is that they're feeling and also provide like your content has to also speak to what it is that they're feeling and what they're going through and solve their problems So in April, we also went to San Francisco. Alexis was working an event and I went to support her, but mentally I was in a very terrible place. Um, My money mindset was horrible. It was even worse in San Francisco because it is so sad to see all of the people on the street. We were like right down by the down by the bay (laughs) that's funny we were by the bay that's what it's called right the bay area i think anyway it's just very sad very unfortunate and it always makes me sad as well and i also feel like i'm a very sensitive person so i'm very like prone to taking on stuff that is maybe not for me to take on anyway the lesson here is to mind your energy and mind your mind and no matter what comes up for you, like time-wise, no matter what it is that you're working on, always create space to work on your energy and your mindset. So May, more sales were coming in from Own Your Intuition, so it was obviously working, which is awesome. Um, I wrapped up my last cohort of the Coach Approach System, which is the Coach Training Academy that I teach in. And at this point, I decided I needed I needed to take a step back to fully focus on my business. Um, this was not a smart short-term financial decision. This was very much a long-term financial decision. It didn't make sense financially to let it go that soon because I was still very much relying on that income in my business. But um, it was taking a lot of time and a lot of energy. And honestly, working with my mom has been challenging just because you know i think first of all family dynamics and second of all it's difficult for me to not take on so much like i'm such a person that steps up all the time and i did that throughout my life like all the time because i was the oldest and um my mom says like you know you are my right arm like you were right there for me all the time i'm like yeah (laughs) that's why i needed to take space you know So I finally um, decided that it was time to stop kind of like I was like that person that was complaining a lot like you know everything was great and I love I loved facilitating and I love my mom to bit she's like a genius in coaching and very masterful at her craft and I loved being with the students and I loved everything about it. The part that was difficult for me was working with my mom and it would frustrate me and I would leave calls feeling very depleted. And so I was ready to finally say yes to myself, even though I didn't know where the money was coming from. 
And so the lesson here (laughs) is shift your energy or get the fuck out. Because I see so many people complaining all the time about their circumstances, their jobs, whatever it is. They're frustrated. They're not in alignment. It doesn't feel good. They're drained, blah, 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 blah. And you have a choice. Like there's always a choice to be made. And I'm very glad that I did make the choice to step away from that because our relationship as mother-daughter was not in a good place at that time. And I feel like we both needed the time. I needed the time certainly to heal and to pave my own path and to step away from her business. Um, And so I don't regret leaving whatsoever. And what I have to say to this is like the more you ruminate over the situation, the more feelings of unhappiness you are going to create, the less magnetism you are going to exude. So fix your energy or leave the situation. Those are your two options. Otherwise, you're going to stay in the same fucking cycle. Fix it or leave, okay? That is like my little like hard hammer whatever moment. (laughs) I will actually be providing an update on the coach approach system and where I stand with that in my next episode so you can stay tuned for that. So now we are stepping into uh, April, May, June. Oh my God, June. Okay, so I launched Rise Goddess, one of my my most popular programs, the program that made me $13,000 the first launch and it failed fucking miserably why did it fail let's have a look at this so i think i only sold in stories after being pretty mia for a while um i did do some posting but it definitely was not what needed to happen to sell high ticket especially at the stage of business i'm in i think After hitting some big milestones for myself in business, I was kind of like, okay, I've done it. Like, I'm comfortable here. And I kind of just let go of the reins. And uh, that's definitely lesson learned. Don't get comfortable where you're at. Keep going. Keep, you know, take the space that you need for sure. Take the space, but like, keep going. Don't stop. Don't sabotage yourself. Um, And that's my big lesson there. So high ticket launches need more, here are my big lessons, high ticket launches need more face-to-face time, webinars, live series, master classes, whatever it is. You need to be connecting with your people. People are not going to just buy a product from you um, for like no reason, you know what I mean? The other thing too is your messaging definitely needs to be on point, which is lesson number two, messaging matters. I attracted a few people who filled out applications who are just in really bad mentalities, which I think really reflects like the place that I was in at that time, which was a bad mentality. (laughs) And um, their confidence was low. They just didn't believe in themselves. And they were not in any place to even be ready to do the work that was required in Rise Goddess. Um, which Rise Goddess is like my program to really get into alignment and start manifesting results in an easier way, like not pushing, but really just learning how to work with the universe. So yeah, these people were not ready. And the message that I was putting out there was attracting the opposite of my soulmate clients. So after this launch, I realized like, okay, I need fucking help. Like I'm so tired of, you know, trying to stick spaghetti on the wall and see if it's stuck. And I was also really needing that connection with my audience and that purpose in my life again when it came to coaching. And so what I did was I offered Rise Goddess to a couple of past clients so I could really take at a really low cost. Um, So I could take the time to not only support them, but also get really clear on what the purpose of the program is. And ultimately, it helped me out a lot, which I'll speak more on in just a moment because I had some big epiphanies come August around this. And um, if I hadn't been supporting these clients, I wouldn't have figured it out. So the lesson here as well is everything happens for a reason. And I want to encourage you that like even if shit fails, keep going. Find a way to keep going. Find a way to keep um, like serving your people. And that might mean shifting the program that you sell. That might mean not selling the program or not offering the program that flopped, right? 
but listen to your intuition. My intuition at this time was really telling me like you need to help these people and you need to be connected. Like you need this for yourself and for them as well, but you need this more for yourself. So that's what I did. I also asked for a $20,000 loan to buy me time and to also invest in my business um, because I saw the potential in my business. I knew that I could really get it to the numbers that I wanted it to be at. I knew, I know that my skill is good. I know all of that stuff. What I needed was support to really help me nail my messaging um, so that I could attract my soulmate clients and also put those foundational pieces in place. So I hired my coach um, because I was tired of doing it on my own. My confidence was super low and I didn't know what the fuck I did to help people anymore. So it was like, you gotta you gotta get some support i also tried to start a retreat um i did a lot of research i found two really ideal places one place we got out of the car and i literally felt the energy shift it was like whoo it was amazing and i will i will host a retreat there at some point but i didn't i decided not to because Um, even though it felt aligned, even though I definitely wanted to work with people in person, I knew that I needed to build my foundation first. I knew that I needed to reconnect with the people that I had lost touch with. Otherwise, I would just have like a handful of people at my retreat and it just, it wasn't going to provide me the financial stability that I needed. So in business, we have to make like intuitive decisions. We have to consider definitely our alignment and our desires but not jump like feet first into a situation if our intuition and if logically speaking it just doesn't make sense so it's both it's the intuition and it's the logic i'm also a huge supporter of making very illogical situations right and also i it just didn't feel like the right time i didn't have the green light my gut was not ready so we backed out and something that i knew i felt super overwhelmed by the idea of running the retreat by the idea of bringing in food bringing in people to do yoga bringing in this bringing in that and it was just way too overwhelming for me and i knew that that vibe was not the vibe that i wanted to approach this with So I decided to shift. In June, at the end of June, I also launched my Telegram community, my free Telegram community where I post daily guidance and daily intuitive messages, motivation, manifestation tips, all of that good stuff. And I also uh, was back in Vegas. We were back in Vegas for my mother-in-law's surgery, um, which went really well. Everything was great there and (laughs) we got sick unfortunately so we actually weren't even really able to support her that much uh we ended up staying in like our hotel room most of the time but after this trip i really decided like okay i need to travel less this is like way too hard on my body to get sick all the time we had been sick like a couple weeks prior to that as well i think alexis came home um at some point with some sort of bug anyway July, we went and spent three and a half weeks in Canada with my family, which was awesome. I started practicing more Reiki and I started my It's a Vibe newsletter, which is a huge win. We've been going strong on that for 25 issues. Yeah, 25 issues, which is amazing. That is like, I feel like super consistent for me as an inconsistent being. And I also cleared my email list. I deleted over 200 contacts Um, But it was definitely necessary. I went from an 8 to 10% open rate to a 30 plus, like 30 to 40, I want to say, percent open rate, which is really amazing. It was also super scary because I only had like 300, maybe 300, almost 400 people on my email list. And I was like, oh my God, what if like these people want to buy from me at some point? You know what I mean? Um, But no, you got to like shed the stuff that's not working, shed the people that are not paying attention, that are not there. Um, I also know my emails were kind of ending up in a lot of spam, so we fixed that as of lately. But yeah, we got rid of people and things are going awesome on my email list. In August, I started exercising more frequently, started to get back to my healthy habits, and had this big epiphany 
around what I actually do in my business, which is that I help people make more money. So I had been focusing on being yourself and trusting yourself and creating a safe space and blah, 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 um, which is beautiful and absolutely true. But it's like, okay, what do you get from having a safe space? Like, what do you get from being true to yourself? And for me, the answer to that is, well, my clients make more money um, by being true to themselves and by living in alignment with who they are by being authentic by being their authentic selves so this kind of really birthed everything that i'm doing right now um of course it had been building up over the last several years but this this month was very pivotal for me in figuring out like oh my god this is what i do i've been in business for over five years actually a full-time business over five years i've been had been in like side hustle business longer than that I have been in the marketing industry for like 10 years now. Like I know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? So that's when I really realized like, okay, I don't like the business coaching industry. And also I can carve my own spot in it. I can be my own person in it. And that's when I really started to own the Aligned Business Coach title. And of course, the Mindset and Manifestation Queen, which never changed. Um, That stays true to this day. And I really started to experiment with new messaging and started posting a lot more consistently, which is key. So let's go to September.